asset solution and asset processes uh, for WIMS for CRM. So what we're going to cover today, uh, just go over a quick background of 2B Solutions, give a, a brief overview of what WIMS for CRM really is, and how it will benefit you. Then we'll move on to the demo portion of the webinar, including uh, the asset add-on and showing how that was added to the solution, uh, the current asset processes and future asset processes that will be added in, and then discuss some mobile solution integration points uh, so that you can bring barcode scanning into your asset tracking and really develop a robust solution. Lastly, we'll follow up with a brief Q&A, uh, which will not be recorded, but hopefully we can cover some topics that might be personal to you uh, that we may not have covered during the demonstration. So a brief history of 2B Solutions. We were founded in 2003, and we specialize in two things, inventory and asset management solutions and dynamic CRM solutions. We are an international company with over a thousand customers in 14 different countries, and we have a very deep knowledge and hands-on experience in inventory management and systems integrations. We are a Silver Microsoft partner, and we are a member of the Apple uh, Consultants Network. So what is WIMS for CRM? In a nutshell, it is an inventory management solution built on the Microsoft Dynamics CRM platform. Uh, it's available as an add-on for current dynamic CRM users and works for both on-premise and CRM online deployments. It extends the out-of-the-box product and order entities into a full inventory management system and lets you manage the supply chain across multiple uh, stocking locations. Of course, since it is built on CRM, it also provides drill-down charts, views, and reporting. And most importantly, all transactions are tracked even down to the serial number or where on your shelf that item ends up resting. So how does CRM, uh, Wimster CRM benefit you? Well, put it bluntly, it's easy to find the information you need and easy to automate the standard supply chain processes. It's also much more affordable compared to other existing accounting or ERP systems that handle inventory. And because of the basis on CRM, it's highly customizable adding unique workflows or unique processes to fit your business needs is quick and easy. Now, of course, this also comes with security roles, security permissions, dashboard views, email integrations, reports, and everything else that comes with Dynamic CRM. As we mentioned before, uh, it is possible for flexible deployments, and we do provide an integrated mobile app. Uh, that you can use to streamline some of the processes both for assets and inventory uh, such as receiving, uh, order picking, or asset management. All right, well with all that being said, let's go ahead and move on to the demo in the WIM system. Uh, so we'll go ahead and exit the PowerPoint here and we'll pull up our uh, WIM CRM system. So in this example, uh, we are using the existing WIM solution, and uh, there is an add-on piece that we provide uh, both with WIMS or as a standalone solution to track assets. Uh, for this demonstration, we will have a one-to-one -one relationship between serial numbers and assets, uh, meaning for every unique serial number in your system, you can have one unique asset. But we also provide either assets as a standalone entity or if your organization has a different unique way of categorizing inventory besides serial number, we uh, offer integration with those type of records as well. So if you had something like a HIPAA reference number or an internal tracking number separate from a serial number, you could tie those one-to-one -one with an asset just as easily. All right, so let's look at uh, assets in CRM here. The default view is active assets. Uh, as you can see, every asset has a name, a type, uh, and we'll get into these fields in a little bit more detail. Uh, but we also have uh, different views where you can look at assets that are currently assigned to someone. Uh, view assets by type. Uh, in this example, we have computer, uh, equipment assets, furniture and office assets. And of course, this can be uh, expanded out to any kind of different asset uh, your organization tracks. 
We also offer views for assets that are not currently assigned. This is assets meaning that are not installed on a location, uh, are not assigned to a user or assigned to a contact. Essentially, these are uh, free assets that can be uh, used for any of the asset processes. So let's dig into an asset record in depth and see what uh, kind of information we can track here. All right, so this is a sample asset and a serialized office chair, fairly simple. Uh, for those of you familiar with CRM, uh, some of these records may seem familiar, uh, owner, currency created on. We've also added uh, a few other pieces of information. Uh, what product is this asset tied to? Uh, also, where was it originally received at? Uh, so this, uh, for those of you who've paid attention to previous webinars, uh, this ties into the multiple stocking locations that you can uh, take advantage of with WIMS. As I mentioned earlier, uh, every asset is tied to a unique serial number, and this would be also where we, uh, if you had that different type of tracking number in your system, uh, this lookup would be pointing to one of those records. We've pre-built a few asset types for, for this demo, uh, furniture, office, computer, and equipment. Uh, it's very easy to add uh, any, entity or any entries to this list uh, as they fit your organization. Uh, and we'll get to a dashboard view in a moment that allows you to kind of get a bird's eye view of all these different asset types. Uh, for assets that track depreciation, we offer a, uh, several different depreciation types, straight line, unit of production, uh, hours of service or accelerated uh, depreciation uh, and allow you to track the initial cost, whatever the current depreciated value of this asset is, and the salvage value for when it hits its end of life. Uh, when you create an asset uh, by hand, you can of course go in and fill these numbers in, but uh, we recommend including assets into a larger process. So uh, one example would be when you receive inventory, uh, whether it's at one of your locations or at a customer's location, uh, at the same time you receive it, you can set the serial numbers that you received, which will then create assets, and carry over whatever the cost uh, from the supplier that you ordered from over into the asset record. Moving over to the right-hand side of the form, uh, right now we have one sample asset process that we'll cover in this demo uh, called checkout or assignment, uh, but this section is basically uh, when you have more than one asset process uh, in your CRM to track which uh, of these processes a given asset is uh, allowed for. So uh, checkout and assignment is a temporary, temporarily assigning an asset to a user or a contact and expecting it to be returned at some point. However, if you had a more permanent process such as installation of an asset on a factory floor or something, uh, you may want large equipment, uh, going back to the asset list here, you may want the, uh, a piece of heavy uh, a loader or a phone, that may be permanently assigned there, uh, and you may not want to allow it uh, for a temporary check-in, check-out process because it doesn't make sense. Uh, fields like this allow you to quickly and easily filter uh, what assets are, are viable for what process and also allow you to do uh, different lookup views based on this uh, functionality. Now the fields down here under asset information, that's sort of a snapshot of where the asset is currently. Uh, you can see current user can be broken, or current owner can be broken into a user record uh, in CRM if you are assigning assets internally, or an external contact record in CRM uh, for if you are assigning assets to clients or a temporary Lend-Lease program. Uh, something like that. Locations uh, are more for those long-term installations I mentioned a moment ago. Uh, we've broken that into internal locations, meaning uh, stocking locations as they're presented in WIMS, but that can also be accounts. Uh, so if you wanted to, let's say, rent laptops or other devices out to a school, you could do that, or even individual uh, long-term installations for this laptop is assigned a user at the beginning of the uh, semester and it would go to an individual contact. We also allow tracking of service dates, uh, and this can be expanded into maintenance dates or anything of that kind. Uh, as several kinds of assets, of course, as you know, need periodic servicing, and this is just a quick snapshot of when was that last touched. The individual service uh, appointments themselves would be tracked separately. 
This is a uh, temporary dashboard we've created to just give you an idea of what's possible. So on the left-hand side, we have a chart, a uh, nice little 4x4 uh, four four pie chart here of how many assets uh, do we have that are active of the different asset types. Now, of course, as you add new asset types uh, to your system and increase or decrease the number, this chart will change. But, of course, this is not the only type of chart that's possible. You could also uh, have a bar chart showing uh, a breakdown of assets by cost or anything else like that. Uh, again, those of you familiar with CRM uh, know the very, very flexible charting capability uh, built in, and we can take full advantage of that with assets. On the other side of the dashboard here, we just have some uh, smaller views uh, filtered uh, in the same way we saw earlier. So the total active assets in the system, uh, unassigned or open assets, and then assets that are either assigned to a user or installed at a location. Uh, in the case of the process we're about to dive into, uh, both of these get set. So you can see that the same record shows up in both of these uh, subviews here because it is both assigned to a user and installed at a location. All right, so I keep mentioning asset processes. What, what is an asset process? That's the term we're using internally to describe what you would do day to day with an asset. Uh, what we'll go into here is an example checkout or assignment, uh, but this could also include uh, long-term installations, uh, individual assignments uh, to given contacts, as I mentioned before. Uh, we can also go more in-depth for uh, location-based installs, breaking it down from a building. Uh, a building could have floors, each floor could have individual rooms, and then individual rooms could have given assets installed in them. So it, it's very easy to add additional layers of granularity uh, into your system based on what your needs are and what information you need to see. All right, so let's create a new example checkout form. All right, so we'll just do Charlie Assignment as a temporary name and assign that to our admin account, Charlie. And, of course, it provides a list of all the current stocking locations because this is meant to be an internal assignment of an asset to a user, and then they would have then uh, eventually return that asset later. Let's say Warehouse 1, and we'll save. So now uh, we've set the user and the location, and now any uh, asset we assign from this point will inherit these two values. So if we want to add a new line to this checkout or to this assignment, we can just hit the plus sign. We'll get a drop down. And now this will be filtered by only assets that have not been assigned. So you can see uh, we had the office chair as a previously assigned asset, and that is now missing from this list. Let's assign this uh, Dell laptop to Charlie. And it starts, you can see, with a status of checked out. We'll save that. And now, uh, as the record has been saved, we can go back to our dashboard here. And if we refresh the uh, open asset view, we can see that before there were three entries there. Go back to the asset dashboard here. And you can see now it's missing, but it does appear in the assigned and installed assets. And we can verify that uh, at the asset level as well by uh, going to the full asset list of all active, um, opening up that laptop asset, and we can see here that it is uh, correctly assigned to Charlie and at location warehouse one. Now, uh, it's just as easily uh, to unassign or complete or check in, basically. So we'll just open up this record set the name to uh, Charlie Successful Check-In, save, and then as soon as we deactivate this record, uh, when we go to the checkout form, not only do we see uh, that that line is now missing, because this is only showing actively checked out assets, but if we go back to the laptop we just momentarily assigned, refresh the screen, and we can see that now it is back in the global pile of unassigned open assets uh, because it has been successfully checked in. So now it's ready to go out to another user or be reassigned to Ch uh, Charlie on the next day. Likewise, if we refresh the uh, global views here, it appears back on the open assets view and disappears from the assigned or installed asset view. 
So uh, again, this is a, a very, very simple uh, example of what you can do with assets. Uh, any kind of asset process you do internally, uh, we hope to be able to uh, reproduce for you and really customize it to your needs. As I mentioned before, whether you want to take the process all the way from uh, the receiving side into installation or uh, handle those as two separate processes where you receive inventory and create assets and then they sit in a, a holding pattern until they're ready for assignment or ready for installation. Uh, both methods are supported. Uh, and then any kind of detailed information you need, uh, this checkout is very, very basic. Uh, as you can see, just a user and a location. But if you have any other needs, uh, filtering by only show assets that need to be ma maintained or only show assets that have been serviced in the last 30 days. All of that is possible uh, with CRM and the asset add-on. And, and that's uh, something I'd like to emphasize one more time before we go back to the Q&A. Uh, assets integrates natively with the WIM solution, but it can be uh, a standalone solution as well for either existing CRM customers or customers that are new to CRM but really don't have the need for the larger uh, warehouse and, and inventory management side of the WIM solution. All right, well that about wraps up the demo uh, for this. Let's go back to the PowerPoint here. All right, uh, next and upcoming webinars. Uh, April 22nd, we will have a, another overview on the WIM solution, uh, focusing specifically on multiple stocking locations, uh, vendors, and inventory, and kind of give a high-level view of what we're adding to the base CRM and how you can take advantage of that in your organization. Then, uh, following right on the heels of that webinar, we'll also be presenting again on the 24th, uh, showing purchase orders, receivers, and how mobile integration uh, can play into that uh, replenishment and uh, cycle uh, in your inventory warehouse environment. If you have a moment and you want to review some uh, previous webinars or if you weren't able to make it today, uh, we do have a YouTube channel. You can see the link on the screen there. Uh, you want to click on the WIMS for CRM 2015 webinar series as highlighted on the right there. If you have any questions or you just like to reach out and contact us about possible opportunities, uh, you can do it at sales at 2bsolutions.net. Uh, that goes directly to our sales line and uh, one of our reps will get back to you as soon as they possibly can. You can also call us directly uh, at the 205 number there or dig into the WIM solution on your own and kind of poke around the feature list at our website, 2bsolutions.com slash product slash WIMS for CRM. All right, well, I think at this point we'll go ahead and stop the recording and move on to the Q&A segment of the webinar. All right, thanks everyone for joining.